What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Yegi Project. So we have launched the pilot coaching episode. So what that is, is that we want to help more of the community to get good coaching and advice from a real life example. So what we did with one of our coaching clients, we offered her to pretty much do it live on camera and you guys can kind of see the process and definitely learn from it along the way. So I hope it's useful and, I, and I'm and i 100% sure, well, maybe 100 too much, but I'm 99% sure that everybody has a lot of similar questions and needs similar kind of guidance of where to start when they um, start working with a business coach, okay? So we, in this episode, we will cover the very, very basics, the initial ways of really like creating a calendar, um, how to hold yourself accountable, what is important to know what to focus on, really like just a plan in place for you to get started to really start or grow your business and get organized with all the crazy madness that goes on in our mind, all the ideas, like techniques to keep up with that. Um, We also talk about some challenges. We talk about out of the box thinking for for marketing that we can do when you move to a brand new city or if you're just starting out your business and you need to build clientele. Uh, We also talk about keeping it realistic with the amount of things and amount of time we can devote to certain tasks to make sure that it actually happens and we grow and we progress ourselves and our business. So a quick personal update. Um, Don't have too much since we spoke last time, but I have kind of a fun thing to share with you guys that has to do with your skin. I know a lot of times our skin or our appearance is important. So one thing I learned that there is a laser treatment and you know, if you guys see my face kind of poofy today, that's what I did. But I want to share with you because those of you that suffer from kind of um, broken veins or redness or eczema, I think this treatment can help again, uh, get advice from your dermatologist. But I was like mind blown learning about this laser treatment. So I was like, what? So many years I suffered from kind of like red skin and I didn't know something like this exists that can help me feel more comfortable in my bare skin right so anyways it's called the v-beam laser treatment um check it out and I hope it's interesting at least to learn about it that you know about that now so that was the main personal update I have you know you guys know I'm working on feeling a lot more comfortable in my own skin without any makeup and being just on the go without having to feel like I have to look perfect all the time But that's one thing I am trying now is that treatment to feel more confident with my bare skin because then it won't be as red. (laughs) Anyway, so that's my human side, um, my little insecurity. So I'm excited to introduce Nayeli, who is my coaching student. And we're going to go ahead and talk about all the things I mentioned, including how to set up the legal documentation and paperwork for you to run a legal beauty business out of your home, to do everything right. So you don't feel like, oh, you're sneaking and you don't have to hide and do this from home. You legally can run a business out of your home if you follow the same procedures. And of course there's coding and stuff like that, that you need to make sure for your current home, current location, that business is allowed to be run out of that location. But again, we cover all of this. So I hope you guys get loads of information and always remember, this is my advice from having my education in business and also running my own business for many years. But this is not legal business advice and this is not legal tax advice. So you always want to consult a business attorney and a tax professional if you have specific business licensing and specific business tax questions. Okay. With all that said, let's jump into the episode. Hope you guys get the best out of it. Hey, beauty lovers and fellow entrepreneurs. I'm Yegi, the owner and founder of Yegi Beauty. Within five years of being my own boss, I was able to grow Yegi Beauty into a multi-million dollar company. This podcast is where I share what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur in the beauty industry. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Yegi Project Podcast. Today's episode is very special because it's our very first, actually, pilot episode for a training, a free coaching session for a real live coaching client. So we're going to go ahead and um, get to know her and interview her and see how we can help her. So you guys can kind of listen in. But with that said, I'm going to pay all my attention to my students. 
student and we're going to go ahead and start our coaching. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and you really learned something um, for yourself and your business as well. So hi, <laughs> welcome Nayeli, how are you today? Pretty good, happy to be here. Well, I'm very excited to have you. Like I said, you're our first kind of pilot to kind of be doing this live not live, but record it. So it's a little different than having a very private one-on-one session, but we're mm-hmm. going to ignore the mic. We're going to ignore the camera and we're really going to try to dive in so I could get to know you and we can have an effective coaching session. How was your drive today? <laughs> it was pretty good. It was pretty good. Um, so like where did you drive from? Lancaster. Okay. So I just moved to Lancaster about a year ago. So um, how did you, you said now you're a um, licensed esthetician and a lash artist. So how did you get into that with, through your journey of all these different jobs? Um, so I think the reason why I had a lot of like different jobs was because I was always like, I was never really happy like uh, all these jobs. Cause like I told you, you know, I've worked from cleaning houses to office work to, I worked at a law firm at some point. Um, I did property manager or whatever, but um, I wasn't, I never felt like really happy. And then, I mean, I have kids. I always oh, had, a, have a, kids a, yeah. too. Oh, that already complicates everything. <laughs> um, I was a single mom too for a while and it was just, it was just so hard finding babysitters and all that. So I always struggle with that. And I always wanted something that it could be flexible, that I could, um, that I could manage, you know, my own time mm-hmm. and my own schedule and at the same time be able to provide and be there with my kids. So, um, that's how, that's how you ended up with the lashes. Yeah. One time. Yeah. One time, um, my last job was at a, as a receptionist at a body shop. I told him my boss was Armenian <laughs> and he would always buy us lunch and he would always bring other Armenian food. So nice. I used to love it. So I was at work and it was pretty, it was pretty slow at the time. And don't tell my boss, but <laughs> <laughs> I was on YouTube mm-hmm. and, and, um, I seen this video that said, um, how to make money from home. Mm-hmm. So that right there, like I'm telling you, it was always like Just in back trigger. of my head. It was always in the back of my head. Cause I was like something that I could do even from home, you know, mm-hmm. and be home with my kids at the same time, you know, work. And I was like, so it, it caught my Is this attention. this a sign? Do I need to watch this video? Yeah, <laughs> like literally, I wasn't even watching nothing related with that. Like, I don't know, it just popped up. It just popped up. Maybe it was meant to be. I don't even remember <laughs> what I was watching. But but yeah, I popped up and I clicked on it. And it was this girl in Canada, I think. And that was what the video was about, about doing lashes, I guess, from home order. Okay. She had like her home studio or so. And yeah, it was like love at first sight. I'm not oh, lying. Wow. <laughs> I literally like, like oh, I could do this. She makes it sound good. No, like it was, it was, it was so crazy because I, I didn't know nothing about lash extensions. I didn't even know that. Did you existed. like the beauty industry? Well, I've always been kind of, you know, like I like. I mean, you've been like testing the waters at different things to see what what's right for you. Yeah, I was never really like really into the beauty industry, but I mean, I've always been a girl that you know likes to get ready, likes to look cute, whatever. So something that is interesting, but um, I don't know that day. I knew about lash strips, but I swear to God that I did not know anything about lash extensions. So it was like mind blowing to me when I saw it. I was like, and then I was away from social media too for like a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I do remember before I got off my social media that, um, there was this girl I knew. She, she posted something about, but I didn't really pay attention. I really know what she was doing. But now that I look back on it, she, she had opened her little studio and it was about lash extensions. But aside from that, like, I didn't know much. And then I got off my social media for, like, two years. I saw that video. Um, I clicked on it, and, it's, like, I was like, oh, my God, what is this? Like, the girl put, like, a before and after, and I was like, that is so beautiful. Like, that <laughs> is so pretty. And when she started showing the technique, I was like, wow, like, I want to do that. Because I was, I've always been very, like, crafty, and mm-hmm. I like working with my hands, you know? And I was like, I want to do this. And my Just, husband was a little bit against it at that time. I didn't even tell him, actually. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I started, like, doing my little research. I didn't tell him anything at the beginning. After I saw that video, I just started, like, um, Googling and searching on YouTube. And then I, I ran into your right. videos. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I ran into your videos. And I don't know if you know Live Bay Supplies. Mm-hmm. This one. Yeah, I run into both of you guys, and I've been watching both of you guys since like day one. Oh, nice. but I remember well, thank you for your support. There. No, I remember your videos where I was very like detailed. You, your videos helped me a lot, like when it came to isolation, like learning everything, like very detailed. Oh, thank you. So I think you, that makes you, me happy. no, you were definitely um, 
uh, one of the persons that I like learned a lot from, and and that helped me, I guess, to you know Thank from you. the beginning to kind of do things right. Because I know, like, a lot of people like yourself or so that have started, like, way before so didn't have that. No, And I think that all. that made it, like, a lot easier for me as wow. well. So well, I really, I'm, I'm really thankful for I love meeting, you. like, people, right, you know, in flesh, in person that have that feedback. Because, you know, sometimes we're, we're behind the scenes alone by ourselves creating these videos or content. Um, sometimes it may feel like, okay, is there a point? Like, do people even care, right? And not yeah. only me, a lot of people feel like that, even on the smallest smaller scale or a big scale but it's so nice to get that feedback hey look this is a real person yeah. real life telling me that i helped her during her journey right so yeah, it's yeah. very rewarding so thank you for sharing that yeah, and even so being i've been here. following you since then and all that so i'm awesome. so happy so to how here. long have you been doing the eyelashes so i started practicing on my mannequin on September 2020. Okay. And so COVID really made you just yeah, sit I guess down that, and, and focus on what you want to do. Is was the, Did it play any role or not? Really? Yeah, um, kind of. I mean, I was kind of happy where I was at, like working uh, as a receptionist. My mm -hmm. boss was, was like the best. Oh, he nice. was very flexible. He was like, it was, a, it was a pretty good job. But I don't know, I'm telling you, that, that video popped up like in my face and it just changed my whole perspective that's great i ended up getting social media and i started like noticing all how everything was like um i don't know everything was like ev like lashes were everywhere you know <laughs> nails even though chocolate like cover the strawberry you know the strawberries that they dip in chocolate and all this stuff it was like so amazing mm -hmm. so i was like i gotta get get to this like, <laughs> i need to i need to get in this nice and, and yeah so, and you said you also went to esthetician school. So you said you want to take it very seriously. You wanted it to do it right. So you decided not only get certified, learn the technique, but go to school and actually get licensed in the industry. So how yeah. was that decision for you going to school, you know, when you already have kids and a life and a family? Yeah, it was. Um, so I started practicing, like I told you, on my mannequin on September 2020. And then I just kept on practicing. Every time after work, I would get home and practice for like two hours minimum. Because wow. it was like, it was so crazy how I felt about lash extensions. Because I was eager to get out of work, like wow. to even get home and practice. That's so I you noticed you're doing yeah. something right. So I knew from the since the beginning that it was something I really like, and that it did. I get bored real quick sometimes, mm -hmm. and I wasn't like I, I would notice like I wasn't getting bored. Like I wanted to keep on learning more. I wanted to know more. I wanted to keep on practicing. I wanted to keep on getting better at it. So okay. from that, from September to December, um, <clears throat> I kept on practicing. I did like two, like three, four models, like my sister and my sister-in-law, whatever. And then January 2021, that's when I decided I was like, I'm going to quit my job and focus fully on this. Wow. I had a little bit of money saved and all that. How was that? What made you like take that leap of faith? Because I know a lot of people sometimes mm -hmm. struggle with taking that final leap of faith of, you know, like ending what they're already doing, like their current job and jumping into something totally new. I think that had a lot to do with it, like my personality just okay. in general. But um, but yeah, and I also saw that I really liked it. And um, I saw there like there's money in the industry. Mm -hmm. There's you know a lot more than money. There's, there's a lot of potential. Yeah, a lot of potential, and and that's why I went for it. Awesome. So yeah, I started taking clients like. Um, I and wouldn't at that charge. Time you were still in the valley, right? You were living yeah, I was in the valley. Okay. In the valley, yeah. Yeah, and then from there, I was like, okay, you know. Like, I'm telling you, I used to watch, like, a lot of YouTube videos, <laughs> you and all that. And, like, I would get all this advice from those videos. Like, you know, you must be um, a licensed assistant and all this stuff, right? So, I want to do things, right, I guess, from since the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, um, I decided to get um, certified first. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> I yeah. already kind of knew how to lash, though, because I'm telling you, all those videos I watched. Of course. And all the practice I would do, like, I already knew how to lash, but I wanted to get certified, you know, just to have yes, my certification. Yes, and it helps a lot, you know, to be yeah. with someone, to get more feedback, to really, like, practice hands-on, like, really get the whole thing with the certification. Yeah. So, so, I think I, any additional education is very, very important. No, yeah, definitely. And... 
and I got certified. And then after that, I was like, okay, I'm certified now, but I must get my license. <laughs> so then I enrolled um, in August 2021. I enrolled into visitation school. Nice. And then around the same time, November, we bought our, we found our home in Lancaster. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, Something so, started happening. <laughs> yeah, like um, we had been looking for a home, I guess, since like the previous year or so. But, um, but yeah, everything, I mean, I ended up enrolling into school because we weren't finding a home. It was so hard. So I was like, might as well just do it while I'm here, still in the uh -huh. valley. And then, you know, probably by the time I'm done, like, you know, we'll continue to search because we had already kind of gave up looking to, yeah. but it came out of nowhere and everything happened. And I was in school, the, we, you know, we, um, closed on that home Great. and then I was like going back and forth. Back and forth, like I was, st I was actually staying throughout the week here at my mom's, and then just go just there so the you weekends. Don't commute so much. Yeah, and I didn't finish um, my station school until February of twenty. 2022. 2022, so this yeah. last year that we just completed. Yeah, so then that's when I fully moved to Lancaster, and that's I kind of like been starting all over. Okay, great. So some <clears throat> of your challenges, I think you mentioned in the email that the, you've been struggling to kind of build clientele or really to just start your own brand new new business mm -hmm. in a new city where you don't know too many mm -hmm. people, right? Nobody. That's your biggest, <laughs> that's your don't biggest know struggle. That. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So um, with a lot of my coaching students, so now that I've kind of got to know you a little bit, like your story, so um, what I need to know is like, what do you want to see? Where do you want to go, right? So the, your first step, where would you want to see yourself for your business? I want to own my own business. So like as that. far as owning a salon, as far as renting a studio, as far as having been booked fully with your clientele? Right now, my goal is um, that start off maybe been able to rent a studio. But I know for that, I need to build up my clientele first. So right now, my focus is building up my clientele over there and then hopefully um, start looking into renting a studio. Yes. Yeah, so then initially that's kind of how we would do our goal setting for the coaching session as well. So we can work on one thing at a time because there is no mm -hmm. way we can, you know, get to our end goal destination by jumping through the steps. So yeah. the first step then for you, it sounds like it would have to be, you know, okay, first I need to kind of build my clientele. Second step, build my, um, uh, rent my studio. So I have mm -hmm. a place to take it. And then after that, your next step would be, you said you did want to own a salon. Yeah. Okay. So then, then yeah. that would be the, the ultimate, you yeah, know, goal, be like the, the long goal, term. Yeah. So as far as um, your first um, session, that's the first thing we would focus on is to really define and clarify your goals and where you want to get and then have a plan, an action plan of the steps that you can get to to get there right mm -hmm. so um with that said so we're gonna put as our step one as um built clients in lancaster california so that's our step one um for your you know main plan so mm -hmm. now as far as this do do you have are you going to be taking clients from home you're going to do home base or are you um, sharing a space or do you need help with that no at the moment i do have my little private room um at home okay. where i'm uh, starting clients from there Okay, perfect. So you first thing you already have the space. So now you mm -hmm. just have to get the word out and really build. So then you can rent the studio, yeah. even a home based business. So depending on the city and the area, if you want to do it legally, mm -hmm. you do want to still get your business license, um, register your business name. So then it's official, you know? Yeah, actually, yeah, that, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly um, one of the main um, questions and things that I would love for you like help me with or give me a little bit of advice on is that like um I've been I'm telling you like since the beginning like I've done a lot of research so I know like the kind of things that are necessary to you know legitimize mm -hmm. everything but I'm just not like too like um, you need a like more specific plan of what you need to do yeah like I don't know because I'm very like I want to do things like you know in order you know like I told mm -hmm. you I got certified and I, I have my license now now my next goal is that I want to know I mean, I want to register my business. I want to start doing everything like more, I guess, legit in some way. Yeah. So, so that's, um, that's actually like my next 
next goals steps. Have, yeah. Okay, so um, so building the clientele and working on all the business stuff, can, we can do it si- simultaneously, right? Yeah. So building clients honestly takes time yeah. um, and of course effort and work. So <coughs> ideally we would want to set everything up in the business and then focus on building the clients. But I kind of look at it differently because the building clients does take time. We should do it together. So yeah. you should be working on the business paperwork and all of that while you're still trying to get the word out to build the clients tell Mm -hmm. um so as far as the business paperwork from home first you need to know like in your area because there's different zonings if you're allowed to run a business from your current Mm -hmm. home so then after that if you are then you would need to um go to the city and get a business license and then register your um, DBA, which is like doing business as, mm-hmm. um, uh, for your business name. So then nobody else in that area can really like take your business name. Mm-hmm. So those are the first in- few initial steps. And I can break it down for you kind of like as a checklist of everything mm-hmm. that you need to do to get like that business legal part. Yeah, because that's where it gets a little complicated. Like you have to make sure like, it's not just like the state It's like your city, your county and all that. Like you're going to make sure that everything. Yeah, especially if you're thinking about registering your name like nationwide or worldwide. You know, worldwide mm-hmm. is very ambitious, you know, yeah. to have like a business like that. But if that's your ultimate goal is to have, let's say your salon trademarked worldwide, you can also do that. It just takes, you know, a lot of steps. What would you say is like the first, first thing that you have to do when you're trying to start like, I guess, legitimizing your business? in general like would it be like let's say like trademarking your name or so or what yeah so first step for me was to look in the database so there's a database system that you can look up and see if your name is taken um i think nationally for the u.s for the u.s so then if it's available there then we can narrow it down to make sure it's available like within our city Mm -hmm. um and then in that case then you can make sure you're you can trademark it accordingly so no one else can pretty much use that name and then from there you will say you have to like register your business in the, in your city or whatever exactly so once that. you know what name you're going to use you can register it apply for the business license um and really that's pretty much it <laughs> um obviously like you can um do it through a lawyer so there is business at their attorneys mm-hmm. starting out a lot of times some people use um like the cheaper alternative which is like legal zoom or anything like mm-hmm. that in order to get help with that but there is a bunch of paperwork if you want to maybe set your business as an s corp or a an LLC, um, llc or exactly so you need to also mm-hmm. determine to see what business model formation is right for you personally because Mm -hmm. if you do do it just as like a um, sole business then you're going to be fully responsible for that business and it could tie into your personal assets so we would need to kind of break that down and see which plan works best for you yeah i think i've been having in mind i want to get like my llc that's what i would like to go for to start off with Okay, yeah, so then that paperwork and then the 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 business um, license, like the DBA, will be two separate things. So those are two separate things you would need to fill out and do in order, you know, to legally, like, operate your business. Um, and then for the beauty industry, too, I know in um, California, there's a state board of cosmetology. You do need to also um, register a licensing um, for, like, board of barbering um, and cosmetology, Mm -hmm. um to again do your business as that oh really so aside from is that a aside from like getting your license like exactly exactly for edition or cosmetology or whatever exactly so that's aside from that exactly so that's separate so that's almost like the salon's license to to operate Okay. Yeah, so I'll give you a nice checklist um, of all of that we talked about. Um, but I would work on those things one step at a time as you fill it out and then ask questions and work on it while you're trying to build your clientele. Okay, so as far as now, what are you doing um, in order to build your clientele? Or where are you at? <laughs> Do you have anybody that's like a regular? Have you started doing the social media posting where are you so at? so mainly that? it's like my instagram where i'm okay. putting my focus on at the moment to like market myself and like you know um um get myself out there over there 
Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. like for marketing. That's pretty much what I'm doing. Just my Instagram, and I do have like um, some clients here and there already, but not my well, books are not like, full. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. You know, we're just starting out, so we want to set goals. Mm. So, what are some clients? Mm, I right now I probably have about four or five regulars. Okay, that are like coming okay. back constantly. So then, um, so current. Four to five regulars. So what is your goal for the next, let's say, let's set it quarterly. So for the next three months. So for the first quarter will be January, February, March. So what is your goal for that? Mm, I would say at least three clients per week. So okay, what would that be? Per week, so you want to be booked with three clients per week. Yeah, at least. Um, okay, so uh, through the seven days, at least three clients. Yeah. Okay, and regularly to be booked like that in the next three months. So yeah. that's your initial goal. Yeah, for the okay. next three months. Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's very achievable. Honestly, I love that. Um, I love that it's a, a achievable goal because that's one thing that's very important when we set goals. We want to be realistic. We don't want to yeah. say, "Oh, I want to be fully booked within the first three Yeah, months. because it was not to me. I was. I want to have you know like twenty clients of a week. Course, <laughs> of course, of course. But no, will, yeah, I know will. you have to be realistic. Like I'm saying, I'm very like I'm aware of like my situation right now. That I'm in a new place. I'm in a new city, and I know it's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of time. To get out there and, like, get people to, like, you know, know about me and stuff. So, I'm very aware of that. Like, I'm not... And I'm not a patient person, but <laughs> I'm telling you, like, being aware of all these things, like, it's kind of, like, helping me be like, okay, you know, you need to come down. I know we want things to happen fast and to be succeeding, you know, quickly, but it doesn't work like that. And a lot of your... Again, <laughs> a lot of, like, the podcasts I listen to you, especially, like, yours, too, like... I get a lot from there, you know, like the things you guys be talk realistic. about, things you guys say, like, you know, be realistic. And it takes time, you know. Other podcasts that I've listened to, like from people like yourself that have been in the industry for like a while already, they all say the same thing. They all say the same thing. Like, <laughs> so it, it must doesn't. Be true. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm like, it must be true because not none of them have said, like, oh, you know, um, I started this week and then next week I was like, you know, fully successful, you know, it doesn't work like that. They all yeah, t- say the same thing. Work. It takes time, work, and sometimes, you know, for some people it may take a year or two, for some people it may take five years, you know. So that has helped me a lot. Like okay. podcasts Being like the ones you make, and yeah, it helps a lot. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad. So you're doing your part. You're continuing your education. You're listening. You're on top of it. I could say that's honestly the the key like element to an entrepreneur that I already know you're going to be successful because you're putting in the work. You're putting in the time to really learn and like see what else you can do. So yeah. you're doing that part great. Keep at that. Don't forget yeah. that. Okay. No matter how busy you get, you have to always continue learning and growing um but as far as building the client so in order for us to achieve this goal what are some things that you think you reasonably can do to build those clients right now my what i had in my mind like i just created my new business cards with my i have business cards already but i updated them and i put my um qr code for my instagram behind Mm -hmm. the business card and my plans are right now, and actually I was like starting January, I have to like, you know, even go out there and like pass on my business cards or even like create flyers. And honestly, those and are great techniques. It's old school, but that works the yeah. best. So just kind of like word of mouth, putting that face to um, like a person to their business, even going to your local uh, yeah. businesses around really does help a lot. So, I've even thought about getting like a little, you know, those little tents. I don't know what they are. Like, oh, like, like a, a cute one, booth, I guess, uh-huh. like a little booth and like putting myself anywhere like in the street and like <laughs> pass you know, it have out. little balloons Why not? and pass it out and stuff. Why but not? But I see, have... look, all these ideas you have are great. I think a lot of times our weaknesses as entrepreneurs too is we might have great ideas but we don't take action. Mm-hmm. So then our goal is to take all these ideas that you think that might work for you that you reasonably can do yourself without any external help and mm-hmm. actually plan it out 
to make it happen. Mm -hmm. So then we talked about, um, so you said you were already, uh, you have your social media, you started post posting, you have your business cards. Um, and then you said you can do a tent for marketing. You said you can pass out cards, flyers. Mm -hmm. One other question I had for you, cause we do want to make sure your systems are in place before, you know, you build the clients too, cause they need to have a place to book their appointments and do all of that. Now, is that clear and set for you? If a client goes to your website, or your Instagram, is it easy for them to click and book an appointment yeah, online? I okay. uh, recently um, got this um, booking site. Okay. So I have the link on my bio on my Instagram where they can easily click on it and okay, straight perfect. to my website. Perfect. Yeah. So that's check. Um, business cards, you already have that's check. Um, and then for your social media posting, do you have kind of a plan and a schedule or are you just doing whatever you can? Um, right now that I'm not as busy, that I'm not that busy, like I try to be on there like daily, posting little quotes, um, sh you know, resharing like little posts like, mm -hmm. like or so. Um, I take, I do take a lot, like every time I get a client, no matter what, I take before and after, oh, okay. so I take little videos. I like, I, I like to stay cons kind of consistent in that way, mainly in my story zone. And I use all the like things that Instagram gives you, like the hashtags, the location, all of that. So okay, so you feel good about what you're doing with the social media. And obviously, um, after I'm, I could review everything and give you my feedback mm -hmm. of what else you can be doing. But um, we want to make sure we kind of plan it out. So yeah. for your social media, um, uh, for example, so in any coaching session, we want to get organize that first so you for right now what is your schedule or timing looking like we want to kind of set a base on what what you could be doing monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday That's saturday something Sunday. i have to work on yeah because i'm telling you since i'm not that busy i guess with work i mean i get up i clean you know i take care of my kids or so and then i mean anytime i'm i have i just go and post something but i don't have like a set schedule like oh you know what like monday i'm just gonna sit here like you know certain Fun. hours and just um so create um content or so yes yeah, so then this is what i want you to work on after this session is um i want you to really like all these things we talked about setting up like um your marketing <laughs> stuff like even if it's that tent passing out cards and flyers we want to really schedule that into the your calendar but right now if you don't have a calendar system that's the first thing i want to help you develop right mm -hmm. so currently you're not that busy like you said because you quit your job and you're really focusing on this but you are going to get busy you're going to get booked yeah. with clients so we want to set you up um uh, correctly from the beginning so we can make sure you continue to grow so what i want you to do is work on your calendar and literally like draw it out like this i have like an old school planner one thing I, I do, I always love having it's a planner. I do have a planner. I haven't, since I stopped, since I got the book inside, I haven't really used it as much. But I love using planners. So that's one Okay, <laughs> good. So this is what calendar I'm talking about. So we want to organize our general week. So not mm -hmm. a planner where every every single day. So that calendar we can use later for the specific tasks that you're going to do, mm -hmm. like the tent marketing, for example, mm -hmm. for you to set up the tent. But your weekly, we should have a general idea of where your time is going and where you can fit what's important to you, right? So if we divide it up and we put Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Like for me, I know Sundays I'm not getting anything productive done. It's like family time, mm -hmm. relax time, all that stuff. So then for me, I just kind of like block that off, right? Mm -hmm. But for you, you want to be realistic and set it up and be like, okay, so Mondays from nine to three, I can't do anything. I'm with the kids. For example, mm -hmm. right? So then you're like, okay, now I have a free block from three to six, realistically, that I can get something done before I have to, again, maybe bathe the kids, put them to bed or whatnot. Or maybe it's like a, my dinner time, my quality time with my husband, right? Mm -hmm. And it's going to be different for everybody. But for you, you want to literally find those blocks of time mm -hmm. that realistically you can dedicate to your business, okay? So once we have those blocks of time, then we're going to spe specify it to like a very in a detailed way of what you're going to do. So then on Mondays, let's say you have your three to six block, you can be focusing on social media, 
So like that, you know, that time is scheduled and you're kind of forced to sit down and work on that okay. part of your business. If it's not, more than likely as you get busy or if a friend wants to come over or if you feel like going out shopping, your time is going to get consumed by a lot of different tasks instead of focusing on your business. So the first step is to kind of protect your calendar, protect your time and schedule these things for yourself as an entrepreneur. Because that's the key thing that a lot of people have a problem with is there's, you don't have a boss, you know, when you're yeah. the boss, you don't have a boss. No one's telling you what to do. It's kind of up to you to take action and really try to grow your business. If not, nothing's going to change. Yeah, I think that's one of the things like I'm struggling a lot lately with because there's days where I could put like all my energy and like focus fully on just like posting and creating posts and stuff. And there's days where I'm just so drained. I'm like, I don't want to know nothing about Yes, this, and that's normal. And not only social media, you know, even reaching out to past clients, mm-hmm. checking on them, you know, all these things we can do to grow our business. Mm-hmm. So for our first session, obviously we're limited on time mm-hmm. um, and I'm not going to overwhelm you and give you so many action items. So this is going to be your first homework assignment, okay? Mm-hmm. So really clarify your calendar and write down in bullet points of everything everything that's important to you that you want to get done for the week for your business just for okay? the week um right. just generally like bi-weekly so we're planning for the first quarter so we're gonna mm-hmm. try to keep you on this schedule for the first three months of the year okay so then if mondays is social media tuesdays could be follow up on business documents so if it's filling it out calling to see what the status is until you get all of that paperwork done Mm -hmm. all right let's say wednesdays if you have some more time that could be the time you reach out to your old clients and be like hey how are your lashes doing you have a friend you know refer refer me i'll give you a ten dollar referral coupon and you know we both win and the client can get a discount we do that we do the referral stuff Mm -hmm. um so all the little things like that that we can do or one specific day it could be focused on um just really like going out and walking around and passing your flyers bonding with um local businesses because you said you don't know too many people right so then that's how you can introduce yourself and really network so but before before we do any other steps you need to fully like kind of dedicate to what's important to you as your initial steps and then fit it into your calendar and that's already going to help you build a clientele right but we also want to block out time to book clients because mm-hmm. let's say on Wednesdays from 3 to 6 p.m you plan to do marketing for example mm-hmm. but then a client calls and they're like oh I want Wednesday 4 p.m now do you really want to book the client at that time where you dedicated to your marketing so a lot of times people in the beginning might be like a little bit desperate right because we're like Mm -hmm. i'll take you anytime like come midnight i'll take you (laughs) i need the money right and i used to do that too but we don't want to do that if you really want to focus and grow your business you want to stay organized on track right Exactly. And you want to protect your time as well. So the clients also know and respect your time, your schedule, and they'll come to you when you're available. So then set your schedule for like those office things, but also keep your schedule open enough where you know these are the slots you realistically can take clients. Mm -hmm. Right. So maybe that's when your kids are in school or when you have a babysitter or whatever works for you. Right. So work on the calendar as your first item and i'm going to give you a list of all the business stuff you need to do and we'll that'll be your second item to try to get all that paperwork done to officially well first we need to check in your area to make sure you can run a business out of your home Mm -hmm. you know and by doing everything legally too it helps you with your taxes and all that stuff too so it's good um so then we'll work on those two things as your initial okay and then all the different client um, building for the marketing that you can do throughout your week but first we're getting organized we're clarifying our goals um for this first session okay so is that work (laughs) yes work on my calendars right like the weekly yes weekly calendar and this is for the first quarter and we (laughs) adapt and change it accordingly based on how it's going so then we'll touch base um monthly Mm -hmm. in order to kind of see okay so how did this month go like did it go according to plan is something working something not working can we put more time and effort in one area that's working and maybe not spend so much time in an area that's not working 
Okay. And okay. what was the other thing you said? Like an so like- the um, business uh, business licenses and um, oh. all the legal paperwork to run a business out of your home. Mm. business licenses and what you said <laughs> no worries so business and license you can just write paperwork it's going to be a list okay. of items <laughs> my writing is horrible yeah part. to run a beauty business <laughs> no worries mine's even worse <laughs> no one can read my writing <laughs> i can't even read my writing half the time but it's for you, you know, whatever helps you. Yeah. Um, now, as far as um, kind of the initial plan, how do you feel about that as your starting point? Do you feel like it's doable? Like what? Uh, what as far mean? as cleaning up your calendar, blocking out your time, figuring out how to organize your day and time to devote to your business and the different areas of it. Yeah, I think it is doable, but it's definitely something I do have to work on. Work on? Get to okay um and then is there something that's holding you back from doing that (laughs) um not really right now i think it's just my kids are on vacation (laughs) nice so they're just home all the time with you (laughs) so i feel a little bit off track right now but i'm actually i i I believe that i'm pretty like good at at that like i I like being organized and um i think i'm pretty good at that like you know setting my schedule on top but honestly to be like to start the year right now i do feel a little bit off track just because of that because my kids are not in school all of us i feel the same way (laughs) but i think as soon as i go back to school um that is one of the things i already had in mind like i have to sit down and like you know start working on these things that I need to get to. Yes. So then that's what I would recommend too. So now you have the, your kids schedule, you know, when they go back. So that first day or second day that you know you have the time, you literally want to schedule it in. This is like the only way I get stuff done and I could be super productive if I plan out and schedule everything. Anytime I don't, like... 80 90 percent of the time it's never gonna happen no matter how how much i want it how disciplined i am overall if it's not planned and scheduled it's proven that it's way less likely that it's gonna happen so then now if you know your kids go back to school let's say on the 15th for example you know on the 15th at 10 a.m you can schedule to sit down and redo your calendar and your plan so that's what i want you to do is literally like put a reminder on your phone so it's a calendar item or in your physical planner that it's going to remind you okay this day and this time i'm going to sit and i'm going to focus and i'm going to do my my initial plan and i'm going to start working on the or and then the following day or whatever other day you can schedule in to start your paperwork for the business no yeah definitely i I believe that that does help a lot because i've done it before and i know it does keep me on track and it keeps me getting my things done but i did notice sometimes i will go like way off like all of us all of us i still do that (laughs) honestly this year in 2022 i had my second baby and so i have two little babies now and i've got off track like all year almost (laughs) so i've literally i i understand and literally every person can get off track but it's up to us to literally be like okay well this is my reminder i'm feeling too all over the place this is when i need to like put everything else aside telling no to my friends and anything that i really don't have to put my time to i'm gonna to protect my time and schedule it out so i get um like organized and regroup so i can you know grow you my know, business <laughs> no yeah and right now honestly i feel like that's how i feel kind of all over the place also because um i think i've i've gotten myself into a lot of other little things aside from the lashes and not too not too long ago i started noticing that that um all those little things i was doing they kind of um, distracted me from like what I really want to do, which is the lash. To me, is the lashes. I went to esthetician school, so I learned how to do facials, mm-hmm. and I like doing facials. But my my main thing that I love that I love doing that I want to do is lashes. But I started adding facials to okay. my um, services, and then I'm like, um, you know how to say I'm very crafty. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to learn how to do nails. Okay, <laughs> I started trying to learn how to do nails. And then so I'd- that's all kind of part of the beauty business, honestly. So you have to literally just make a decision and be like, OK, what do I want to do? So you said you really just want to do the lashes. Yeah. And it is so tempting for us to want to do a lot of different mm-hmm. things, because, again, like I said, especially in the beginning, we're desperate to like make money and we're yeah. desperate to like try different things to to really like see what's what's well, out there. Yeah. Um, and that's OK. So test the waters. But from the sound of it in your gut 
that feeling, if especially that you're saying it out loud. If you feel like, okay, I'm kind of like getting distracted or all these other things yeah. are wasting my time, you need to remind yourself and you need to cut those out so you could stay focused on what you uh, really want, right? Yeah, no, that's definitely one of the things that I kind of like caught myself. Uh-huh. And I was like, I. But if I, you do want it, there's nothing wrong with it. You don't have to just do the lashes. I know a lot of people that do all those services, but for you too, let's say you want to learn because it's going to be a continuous education mm-hmm. type of thing, right? You want to stay on top of the industry, but again, you want to schedule it in and you go like, okay, on Mondays, I'm going to focus. Let's say the nails are not as important to you. Maybe one time a week, I can focus on my education and growing that skill. And then four days out of the week, I could do the lashes if that's what you want, right? Yeah. So there is a way to do that as well. If that's something you think you're really interested in, but right off the bat, if you really feel like, okay, no, I'm just getting distracted like I shouldn't be doing this then definitely like protect your time and plan it out I think that's what I think that's what planning and the calendar really helps us is to stay focused on what's really important Important. to us versus all these other distractions because it's so easy to get distracted with so many things again I'm guilty as charged and (laughs) throughout like how many years now like 15 years or more than that in in like business um or just even in my adult professional career i've gone all over the place many times right because i get distracted to i'm like oh i kind of want to dabble in this maybe i could do this and and it's normal but we just have to kind of have somebody remind us or we remind ourselves anytime we sit down to kind of really get everything organized and planned out to be like okay no where am i really going what's my final destination Mm -hmm. what am i doing that's really not helping to get me there that i could cut out so i could focus my time on the thing that are helping me to get there no yeah definitely like with the nails and stuff i got into it because it, like you get very creative with those like mm-hmm. you see so many like cute nails and all this but i think it was more like for kind of like the fun of it i guess yeah. you know more like a hobby maybe instead of yeah. a career for you like i like and enjoy doing it but it doesn't compare to like the lashes and okay that, so so yeah but um but i have like made up my mind in that way that it, even though I don't want to like just push it to the side, like I want to continue doing it, but it's just not as important. Okay, as so lunch. plan that out within your first assignment of the calendar. Okay, yeah. um, now you said you had a lot of questions for me, so let's use maybe some of the time so I can answer and help you with any other questions that you have. I know you're looking forward to this session, so besides <laughs> our initial steps, which honestly it seems very basic, but unless we get through these initial steps i can't help you grow more right so we need to get through these steps really get everything cleaned and organized set our goals um so then we can go to the next steps okay no. but ask away what are no, some questions you have the, for me my questions Hannah, was that because i'm telling you um about like, like, where like, do the, you start where do i start to start you know like registering my business or you know mm-hmm. can you start with that so i could feel more comfortable to even throw myself even more out there yes so So i'll link all the website stuff below like where you can look at it and this is for california not link i'll send it i'll email it (laughs) to you but uh we'll like link some resources for our listeners as well Mm -hmm. um but obviously any like legal advice so this is general business advice i am i've been in business for many years and i also have my mba so i have the right to give some sort of business advice but um obviously um uh, if it's a legal advice or anything like that consult with the lawyer <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. um but we'll, i'll i'll give some resources that are out there that are free that help helped me that can help the listeners and for you as well as your next steps okay but yeah that was pretty much it I okay think. so we covered it <laughs> i mean you answer all my questions on your oh, podcast yay! and videos so. <laughs> Yes, and we do have another episode on like specifics of the things that you can do to build your clientele. So I don't know if you've listened to that or watched that. I think it should be on YouTube and the podcast. So go listen to that again and take the notes and you can plan some of those items within your marketing time of your calendar. But Mm. we'll be more specific to you and your business on our next coaching session. So for the first session, this is what I want you to do. And you have about a month to really get organized and see how it's going. Then we'll touch base again and and go from there what would be the things that you would advise me to focus on to kind of build up my clientele or so 
Okay. Like, what would you advise? So me? we already talked about a few specific items that were your ideas, actually. That's why I asked that, right? So mm-hmm. then continue to post on social media. Mm-hmm. That is free resource to get the word out there. Like you said, there's a lot of resources out there, like what hashtags to use for beauty, um, and really just mainly being active and posting your before and after photos Mm -hmm. take clients and uh, take models if you don't have clients take free models in between so you can gather more content that you can post and get the word out there tell those models to spread the word right Mm -hmm. um some good models for you to have is in the local businesses you can have you can work on the reception receptionists Mm -hmm. of businesses because they're very people facing right or like cashiers they're very people facing so if you do their lashes for free too that's an angle you know if they love them and somebody asks them they're gonna help spread the word for you i didn't i had not thought about that yeah yes. so there's there's a lot of little things like that that you can do to plan it into like your specific calendar but let's say on tuesdays your um tuesdays from three to six it's your marketing time like going out and in person marketing that's um that's will be your general day so for the first tuesday of the month you know okay i'm gonna plan we want to be more specific i'm gonna plan to go to a b c d businesses that are around me on the next tuesday since that's my marketing time again okay on this time instead of going to the businesses i'm gonna um uh google and i'm gonna find uh, marketing uh, opportunities for example so it could be like blogs for example you can um uh, try to like get your name and everything mentioned in blogs for local Mm -hmm. communities i know a lot of communities also have like local facebook groups local Mm -hmm. Um, local Instagram pages so you can try to uh, market with local um, resources like that and be like hey I'm new in the area I'm a lash artist what does it take to kind of like collaborate or market together is there a cost to it is there um, you know like how can we trade and help each other out so a lot of times with the like local stuff like that it's not costly at all and it really helps the most because it's literally your local community or even if there is like local networking centers the library local like Uh, business bureau all of that thing those things can help you kind of network and get the word out and as simple as just stopping by and leaving some of your flyers yeah Yeah, no definitely i think um like all these ideas go through my head like when i mentioned all these things but yeah, I need to I need to take action. That's what I need to exactly. Do so that's why our calendars are, is going to make gonna us help. take action. So yeah. that's the difference between somebody who loves listening to the podcast or somebody who's serious and is going to take action. Mm-hmm. Is we're really going to plan out in detail of our calendar, and that's how the coaching is going to work. Because I'm going to hold you accountable. I'm like, okay, this was your calendar. Did you do it? <laughs> did you go? <laughs> and if not, how did it go? Then you know I'll advise you and give you feedback and all of that. Mm -hmm. but um that's the main thing is for you to be specific on your calendar uh, of which day you're gonna do what so then you could make sure you go out and do it because ideas are great but unless we're very clear and specific with date time place like very much detail it's never gonna happen so make sure um you work on that and we'll touch base again and finalize it and you'll be like okay great i have my plan for the next whole month right this is what i'm gonna do and then you just take action one thing at a time no yeah definitely thank you so much you're that welcome <laughs> are you overwhelmed or you're like no. okay i'm excited i have a no, plan i'm excited and, okay um, good <laughs> i just i don't know it's it's very helpful though that you're like telling me these things too you know so i know that i need to get out there and just take action okay because- it's easy. that's all it yeah. takes and our first goal for the first three months is three clients per week right okay. so we can reach you can reach hold on let me see how many clients per week do I you're no, like yeah. let me up my the, goal the, yeah <laughs> no i think i usually get like one or two so i think maybe three to four okay we can let's, do three we can do let's, three to five let's make it know, that's a, yeah that's a good range we can do three to five which is like almost one person a day three to yeah. five um and that's reasonable and just even within our local like one month 
mile radius, you know, there's like a million people mm-hmm. living there. So the opportunity of clients is out there. Even if there's 200 lash artists, like yeah. doing lashes very close to you or whatever business you're doing, the opportunity is out there. You just you have to, get exactly. And you just have to put the word out there so they know to come find you. <laughs> yeah. Go girl, come get your yeah. lashes done right now. I yes. need you. I need to meet my five, five clients. You early. will. <laughs> and you will remember like five a week it's it's slow start in the beginning but it's an exponential growth that first Mm -hmm. one person is going to tell two people those two people are going to tell two additional people so then that's four people then those four people are going to tell two additional people so that's like already 16 people right did i do that right (laughs) <laughs> four to the power of four you're asking the worst person i, I need my to get my calculator but, uh, i know right but that's like the key it's this it, it 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 grows exponentially so initially it seems like it grows very slow but then once people start spreading the mm-hmm. word it goes by really quickly the client building so initially you're gonna have to put a lot of work and you'll probably see little results, but then once you're there, it's going to just skyrocket. So that's kind of how exponential growth works. Is that so, how you felt like when you started, how it worked out for you, Polly? Do you I feel, feel like, like at some I point was, it just like... Yes, yeah. yes. I don't even remember how, honestly. <laughs> I was just doing my thing. Because for, for me, I started the salon and it was a full service salon. So we were doing all the services, including mm-hmm. myself. I was doing anything from pedicures to to <laughs> like waxes to blowouts to lashes anything i can think of in the beauty industry i was doing because again i was desperate i just needed to make that money whatever client and beauty come to me i got it yeah <laughs> that's how i feel yeah and like I, I, that's when i was thinking like when i was trying to get into all this i'm telling you the nails and others like anything they need they're not just gonna come to one place you know yeah waxing facials nails, but honestly lashes. my experience was it's better to specialize yeah. and be really good at one thing and be known on that one thing and you'll build those clients faster mm-hmm. But for me, it kind of happened magically. All the other services, it wasn't building great. And um, lashes, it just blew up. Everybody was like, oh, no, she does great lashes. I'm like, okay, maybe I do specialize in lashes. <laughs> so um, that's kind of how it happened for me. But back then, too, also, there wasn't as much competition, as many people doing it. So I feel like maybe I had a little bit of an advantage on that end because everybody mm. knew, like, I was it in that area and I was really good. So I feel like I built it a little bit faster, but everybody has a different journey. But you're saying in your area too, not too many people are doing it right mm-hmm. now. So that's a great opportunity for you to kind of spread the word that, hey, I'm here, I'm good. Lashes are amazing, right? Yeah. Show them the before and afters, put it on your flyer. And a lot of people, anytime they experience it, honestly, they do want to get it again. It's addicting yeah. and it's beautiful, right? Or whatever service that that the listeners or anybody that's providing if they truly believe in it they have to they, they will be able to sell it because you do believe yeah. in it and you do love it right yeah i do <laughs> i haven't i haven't um been able like to get used to them like as, as crazy as it may sound um right now i'm wearing lash strips and okay. i feel so weird because i'm not i don't even wear lash strips okay but i love doing lashes and i love the way they look but and I've tried getting them done a couple of times and I just haven't been able to get used to them. And then I'm moving to that new area. Like, I don't know if maybe because I'm a lash artist myself, I kind of get really picky. Like, I guess. That, how they look yeah, and that's common. Them. That's common. So. But I want to say that was one marketing thing that worked for me too. In the beginning, I always had my lashes done and I that's still do. And ahead. I love it. And I truly love it. That's how I got into it too. But it helped a lot with because people would see it and be like, ooh, I love your lashes. And I'm like, ooh, I do do lashes here's my business card you know so i think like just having that walking billboard of yourself and if you really love it believe in it then you should really be having them you know it makes sense that sometimes you don't have time or it just doesn't work out but for the most part like for me like if i go to a hairstylist and they have like really crappy hair I kind of don't trust them. So I yeah. feel like it's the same thing with yeah, anything, no, right? right? Um, yeah, so let's add that to my yeah. <laughs> Get lashes. Get lashes. <laughs> no, yeah. Because you'll um, be your own walking billboard. No, yeah. honestly, yeah. And I, and I need to get to that too. Because I, I keep saying it like, oh, you know, 
I'm gonna look for a lash artist nearby, you know. And, then and that's I good just too been... because you guys can trade, you can support each other. Even just having that community of like supporting each other helps a lot. Like sometimes you think, oh, they're your competition, but in reality, they're like your friend, you yeah. know? You wanna have somebody that understands you, that's going through the same struggle with you. You guys can kind of motivate each other to like go and partner up to do the marketing. There's enough clients for everybody. So mm-hmm. even if you partner with the lash artist near you and be like hey i'm starting out are you starting out in the area too do you want to like work on our businesses together let's schedule like wednesday evenings it'll be more fun like doing it together and we can motivate each other and it won't be as boring for example no. you know <laughs> or i feel kind of shy going into other businesses alone do you want to go together you know stuff like that so mm, that's, that's one idea. thing you can do too yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely i need to and a lash artist buddy over there or something. Yeah, so that'll be part of our plan. But um, honestly, for our first session, I think I gave you a lot to think about. We have a pretty um, good plan. We'll specify it and make it very in detail so it's an action plan for you. And then you can work on it and then we can touch base and see how you're going. Mm-hmm. How does that sound? That sounds good. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, for our listeners, um, it is kind of weird knowing that there's a listener, but I'm also <laughs> coaching Um, But I I, I think hopefully you guys learned a lot too and you can use some of the tips for yourself as well if you're in the same boat trying to build a new business. Um, But yeah, until next time, thank you for listening. Bye. (laughs) Thank you for listening. Please rate and review this podcast. Follow and engage with us on social media under the Yegi Project. And if you're interested in being a guest, email info at theyegiproject.com and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes.